Finally tonight, Washington's Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts will bestow its Kennedy Center honors on five of the nation's leading artists this coming weekend. Jeffrey Brown recently had a chance to sit down with one of them. He's known as the saxophone colossus. A name that dates to a 1956 recording Sonny Rollins made when he was 26 and a title he continues to hold as one of the all-time greats of jazz. At 81, Rollins is a living link to giants like Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, John Coltrane, and Miles Davis, all of whom he knew and played with, and to the Harlem neighborhood where he grew up, where jazz was everywhere. So there was music all over. When I went to a, a public school, there were, we used to pass by the famous Cotton Club. You, you, you remember sure. the Cotton Club? and we, we walked by going to school. So I was just immersed in it from the beginning, really. It, it was everywhere, but you're, you're essentially self-taught, right? I consider myself a primitive mm -hmm. because... What does uh, that mean? <laughs> I've, I've had to explain that a lot. Uh, it means sort of that when I got, when my mother bought me the second hand alto saxophone, I went into the bedroom, you know, and I just started playing. I mean, I don't know what I was doing, but I was in a zone. I was already doing something. In fact, Rollins was a sensation even as a teenager formed and recorded with leading players of the day. His first album as a band leader came in 1951, and many more followed. Playing with those great people like Charlie Parker, Thelonious Monk, Miles Davis, and all those giants, I wasn't afraid because I felt that I belonged there. You felt you, were, you belonged with them? Yeah. yeah, but I was still in awe of them, and it was... I mean, I, I didn't feel I was equal to them. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that, but I felt that, especially they accepted me, but I felt that I was where I was supposed to be at. So it, it, it was quite a uh, uh, wonderful experience in a way. You know, one of the things that people have long admired you for is the ability to, uh, and I always hear this phrase, find fresh musical ideas. What, what does that mean? What is it, how do you define a musical idea in jazz? Wow. Well, jazz, as you know, is an endless source of ideas because you can use anything. You can play operatic arias. You can incorporate them into jazz. You can play gypsy music. You can incorporate it into jazz. You can play European classical. You can incorporate it into jazz. You can use anything and jazz it up, as they used to say. Mm -hmm. Show tunes. And, show and, tunes. Yeah. I know all these show tunes. Yeah. And uh, it's great because they, they're still there, and I just, they come out at strange times. And, and where does the uh, improvisation come in? Well, Jeffrey, improvisation is something which is highly misunderstood these days. Improvis I think my friend Branford Marsalis, a uh, saxophonist, he explained it very good. Improvisation is really not so much remembering things, and, I, and this is what I do when I play. I forget things. When I go on the stage, I want my mind to be a blank so that I can things can come into me without my knowing where they came from. So are you surprised by what comes out? Sometimes I'm surprised by what comes out, yeah. At several key points in his career, Rollins simply stopped performing and recording. Most famously, he spent one of what he called his sabbaticals practicing on the Williamsburg Bridge in New York. He later released an album titled The Bridge. I went away because I was getting too much acclaim and you were I getting too much attention. Too much attention. And you didn't like that? Well, no, I liked it to a point, but you know, Jeffrey, I think the biggest thing that in my life that I can be proud of, my epitaph, is that I knew 
inside how I was doing, whether I was playing great or whether I wasn't playing great. And I shut out the people that were telling me, oh, Sonny, don't go away. You lose your audience. So I said, no, I want to practice. I want to get better. But here you are still at it, right? Why? Surely you don't need to be out on the road uh, performing. It's hard being out on the road, but jazz is, is kicked around, it's down, and it's getting a little bit of, of, of appreciation, it's getting a little bit of respect. So I feel that I have an obligation to jazz and also to myself to play as good as I can play. I haven't reached that point yet. You really feel that? You haven't oh, reached no, your well, own? You're oh, not satisfied with oh, your... Oh, no, 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 I'm far from satisfied. I'm far from satisfied. That's why I'm still practicing. These days, Rollins performs about two dozen times a year. His last two albums, titled Road Shows Volume 1 and 2, were recorded at concerts from around the world. And now he's being honored as one of this nation's foremost artists, joining other jazz greats such as Ella Fitzgerald, Count Basie, Dizzy Gillespie, and Dave Brubeck. You know, we started talking about that era of your childhood in Harlem. Mm. You're one of the last ones left from that great time, right? Well, you must be aware of that. Does it I, weigh on you? Well, it does. Uh, all my friends are gone, Miles, Coltrane, Monk. I mean, in a sense, they're gone, but not really. I'm, I'm the last guy, but in a way I'm not, because uh, when I'm gone, the music, my music is going to be here. So we're all still here. We're all still here. Still here, still practicing, and still performing.